Hey, it's Dr. Kate Walker with your Thursday group coaching. As a member of Step It Up, you get to have a weekly coaching session with me. And you can either watch it live, uh, participate live. The Zoom link is right there in the Facebook group. Or if you're not a Facebooker, that's okay. You get it in the emails. And I put it in your Step It Up course in that very infamous one start here module, right? When you get in there and you say, read this first or watch this first, you'll see the links are right there for you. The links for the Zoom never change and the links for my office hours never change. So remember with Step It Up, you get weekly group coaching. Most of the time it's live. I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes I'm traveling and I pre-record it and you get monthly live Q&A with me. I call those my office hours. So that's going to be in the morning. It's Wednesday seven at 7.30 a.m. The dates are always announced in email. So please check your spam folders. I know Kate Walker training emails sometimes like to sneak in there. And some of you have spam boxes like Hoover's, right? Like those, those vacuum cleaners, my goodness. So always, if you think that I'm ignoring you or you haven't heard from me in a while, check your spam box. And uh, if you're tired of me, then just set me to spam because at least you know where I'm going if you need to find me. All right. So today's training is all about finding your passion and why it's so important. Now, it's not like the passion that got you to counseling, right? I know you had a passion for counseling, right? That's why you got the, the degree, you took the licensing exam, you got through your 3,000 hours, and here you are. It's not like you're going to stay the same, though. I mean, you're going to keep growing. I know in my house, they laugh because about every 14 years, I change careers, <laughs> or at least I add to the one I have. But what makes it not shiny object itis or comparaphobia is the fact that I have a passion and I I always check with somebody as I'm develop, developing my passion into a business idea. And that's what we're going to talk about today. You're going to get three exercises that I love to use with my coaching clients to help them identify their passion so they can, number one, attract their ideal client. It's so important that your passion is leading you to your ideal client. Now, if you're watching me from an agency setting, you know what I'm talking about. You're a generalist. Most of the time, you just have to take the, the clientele that, that they put on your schedule. And you know there are clients that you dread, and then there are clients that seem to energize you, and you want to get more training. And when they walk in the door, you're actually present with them. They're not triggering your countertransference. You're able to stay with them and do some awesome interventions. Then you're that's a passion. As you follow your training, as you follow your passion, then you can start to develop your strategic plan. Now, your strategic plan guides your business. And I like to have a strategic plan that's about five years out. So I backwards plan from my big, hairy, audacious goal, right? That BHAG goal. I backwards plan to the day so that I stay on track, right? So my passion informs my ideal client which informs my strategic plan. Next, your passion is going to inoculate you from shiny object itis. It's so easy to compare what you're doing with other people and think, oh my gosh, they're doing the thing, I have to do the thing. They're adding this, so I need to add this. Oh, Kate says I need branches of business. Ah, so many things. That's shiny object itis and comparophobia. So last night in the higher right the first time, how to beat overwhelm and make sure you're scaling your business appropriately, I talked about this idea of the first step in hiring right is to answer the question, why am I hiring at all? Right. And my example was uh, like a social media manager. I want somebody to manage my social media. Well, I would push back and say, why? What, what is social media doing for you? What is it doing to get you phone calls so you can speak to that person and see if they are, number one, your ideal client, right? And they become a client and book an appointment. Or number two, a happy referral who walks away with three referrals. And who becomes, number three, a raving fan and directs family and friends back to your practice because of how friendly you are and all of the amazing resources on your website. 
right? If social media isn't doing that for you, or you have no way to track if the clicks and the likes and the impressions and the hearts and the thumbs, if you can't track how that's impacting your phone calls and your conversion rate, then hiring somebody to do that isn't going to magically sprinkle some fairy dust on it and make it suddenly work for you. So it's very, very important that you let your passion, if you've got a passion for social media, fine, learn how to do it. If you have a passion, I'll I'll give my, my own example, Instagram. I didn't understand Instagram for the longest time. I still don't. The logarithms or the algorithms, whatever they're called, they change all the time. And I'm still not quite sure how many of my actual contacts come from Instagram. I'm trying to track that, but it's still kind of a mystery. Now, if I hired somebody to go just do my Instagram for me and I was paying them 25 bucks an hour, holy moly, would I be throwing my money away because I have nothing to show that it's actually resulting in phone calls that I can convert into actual clients, happy referrals and raving fans. Okay, you with me? So your passion is going to determine your career, your niche, your ideal client, those happy people that come into your office. It's going to determine your, again, your five-year plan, how you grow, whether you hire. It's going to determine uh, whether you're growing strategically or you're just suffering from shiny object-itis and comparophobia. Also, when you think about this idea of finding your passion, it's, okay, where do you grow next? I mean, you guys know I teach the 40-hour training to become a supervisor in Texas, If you're hitting that three to five year mark in your license and you're starting to get a little antsy, think about supervising, right? That idea of becoming a mentor for the next generation of counselors can become part of your five-year plan. So we've talked about a lot, or I've talked about a lot of things and let me check and just see if anybody's gonna join today. That's okay if you don't, you're gonna be watching it on replay. Let me check the Facebook page real quick. It is often, there's often a lag. So it's funny because I see my videos from last week and I can tell because of what I'm wearing. Thank you, Crystal Acosta for my t-shirt. This is awesome. I love my cool, cool, cool therapy is cool, cool, cool t-shirt. Let me hit refresh and it might help if I could actually see. Okay, so I don't see any comments yet. So if you're trying to comment, give me a second and I'll go back. Uh, If you're watching this on a replay, just make sure you tag me so it shows up in my notifications and I'll jump back and answer you in the thread for this video. Okay. So we have lots of new Step It Uppers. I hope you're here. I hope you're watching. If you're watching me on YouTube, awesome. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all the things. So here's what you're going to get from me today. Glasses. You're going to understand today how to niche faster and pivot sooner. I'm going to give you, you'll get some questions that you can ask yourself. I'm going to take you through those exercises and you'll get to, hold on. No, I think that's it. All right. I'm going to screen share. So how do you find your passion? Well, the exercise that I love, one of the exercises that I love looks like this. Oh, I don't want to end the meeting. Don't, please don't end the meeting. Share, see, I'm going to leave these on. All right, here we are. So beginning with the end in mind. So if you're a Stephen Covey fan, you recognize that term, beginning with the end in mind. That's from the seven habits of highly effective people. One of the seven habits is beginning with the end in mind. Now, early in my career, I honestly had no idea what that meant and how I could possibly understand that, right? As a 20-something, 30-something, I don't know what I want. I just want my kids to be fed. I want my groceries to be bought. I want money in the bank and maybe a nice trip to Disney World every once in a while. So this is a really important question. And the prompts that I offer are wealth, legacy, sell just means you want to create a business or a practice that you can value enough, create enough value so you can sell it someday. And then the fourth is achieving balance. So I'm going to go through those. Imagine wealth as not necessarily a Bentley in your garage, 
That's if that's what you want. That's awesome. You do that. Wealth is more about safety and security, especially in your later years and right now, if and when emergencies happen. So that safety and security can be mitigated or are enhanced, I should say, by wealth. Now, money is not a bad thing. And I've talked to you in other videos about how to add additional streams of income to make sure you can take those sick days, buy new tires, get little Tommy new braces. But when you think about wealth, that definitely definitely is a focus for a practice. And if you are doing all these shiny object things and somebody like me sits you down in a coaching session and I'm like, hey, you know what? 90% uh, of these things aren't bringing you income or clients. They're not creating raving fans. They're doing nothing for you, right? Being willing to chop those out and focus on the things that bring in the cash that would be how you design your five-year plan, your strategic marketing, et cetera, et cetera, from here on out. It's hard to do, but I, I also want to take you a little step further. You can only pick one of these. You can only pick one, wealth or legacy or sell or achieve balance. I'm not saying that forever. I promise you can change. I'm very flexible. But for right now, if I said you needed to design a strategic marketing plan and a five-year plan based on one of these things, what would you need to change in your practice today? If your idea, if your passion is legacy, if you're creating a practice that your community is going to rave about, or perhaps you can even leave to one of your kids who becomes a counselor, that would then alter your marketing strategy and your five-year plan. Maybe you are later in life, or I hope you have, you have this idea early in life, of selling your practice. Well, practices aren't very valuable. I mean, you know, if it's a couch and a, a computer and, you know, maybe some office furniture, we're not like an insurance company who has a book of business, right? We can't sell our client list, right? All you can sell are assets, hard assets, or your name, your good name. And so even a website, it's difficult to value. So that would mean if this was your priority, meeting with a financial advisor, talking with someone who buys and sells businesses to give you some advice on what you need to do for the next five years to make sure your practice is valuable enough to sell it for the price you want. Achieving balance. Now this, I'm probably talking to the overwhelmed practice owner. I'm talking to the person who's taking on too many things. They're trying to be the technician and the manager and the entrepreneur. And they're right. They're not hiring right. They need to watch my webinar from last night. Right. So if that is your number one priority, if you only picked one, how would it determine your marketing? How would it determine your five-year plan? your, your seven day plan, right? So each one of these things has to be driven by your passion. And as I mentioned, it's going to change over time. So wealth may be your passion this year. Legacy may be your passion in a couple of years. Selling your practice may be your passion way down the road or right now. And achieving balance, whew, if that's your passion, come and see me, right? We need to sit down and look at the things that you're doing too much of that aren't bringing you a return. And I bet you it's really one of those other things, but I don't know, we'd have to sit down and talk about it. All right, you remember Step It Uppers, Step It Uppers, that's you. You get discounts on consulting. That's in your Step It Up profile. It's down in the section under uh, special tools. I'll have to look at that. Anyway, it is in your Step It Up profile. All right, let's keep going. Another exercise I like to do with my coaching clients is a three and three exercise, right? And just you're making a list of the three things you love and the three things I didn't put the three things you hate. That's the question that I would ask my kids at dinner time. <laughs> Tell me three things you love and three things you hate. Mom. Okay. But, uh, you know, it's it strikes conversation at the dinner table. I thought it was a great thing. So Three things you love about your life right now. Now, you notice it doesn't say three things you love about your practice. No, three things you love about your life. Now, if your practice makes it on the list, awesome. If it doesn't, that should tell you something. 
the way I phrase the bottom three questions are three things I would tell younger me to change so that right now I would be doing, owning, sharing one, two, and three, right? So if I wish that right now I owned uh, a storage unit, I would say that I would tell younger me, you know what, in addition to counseling, please get your uh, business real estate license. Please start now so you can be a broker in five years. Please talk and talk more at chamber meetings with people who deal in the wheel and deal with uh, commercial properties. So thinking about what your passion is right now, what would you have told five year ago you, 10 years ago you, right? What would you tell him or her that would have resulted in you having what you wish you had or doing what you wish you were doing or sharing with someone else something else? All right. So I like this because it gets very specific because, you know, there's a five year you from now. Right. They're out there. A 10 year from now you exist in the quantum field in a parallel universe. I don't know whatever you ascribe to, but they're out there. And they're either giving you a hug right now because you're having this conversation with yourself or they're like, uh, oh, ooh, ooh, oh, I hope they do the right thing. So I prefer to lean on the side that they're giving you a hug, right? Because you're awesome. You're doing great. You're here, right? You're, you're, doing, you're doing all the things. All right, let me check. Okay, no comments. That's okay. I'm going to keep pushing on. Here is... Another, this is actually kind of two parts. What does successful mean to you? I can work part-time, retire, work on my novel, get new clothes, get car, hobby, et cetera, travel, have a second home. If you're still counting on your client income, and I'm talking to you practice owners, not agency folks or school counselors, if you are still depending on this sort of dollar per hour it's going to be very stressful if these things come up and you haven't planned for it, right? Retiring, or if you're trying to take a couple of days off and work on a hobby or a novel, or you do need new tires, right? So this is another clarifying exercise. If you're stressed because you don't have a financial bridge or a supportive partner or another job that, that can help you sort of fill in the gaps if something comes up, that's going to make it hard to be in that entrepreneur mode because of fight or flight. So defining success is another way to plan ahead and course correct, right? Because remember, passion, the two things I told you it could do, right? Uh, it could help you get your niche, I have niche, 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 I don't know how to say it. You'll that's right, you'll niche faster and pivot sooner. So if something isn't working, right? If you decide you want to start counseling, uh, I don't know, trapeze artists, and you're just not filling those ranks, right? You're not getting enough clients or potential clients to call or email. You're not able to convert enough into actual clients or referees or, or raving fans. Pivoting, finding your passion is going to help you pivot faster. When something's not working, you got to pivot. And if you're being led by that shiny object itis and comparophobia, you may pivot in the wrong direction. So knowing you're in a dollar per hour space adds stress to that, which means you're going to be making decisions that are kind of ugh, based in fear. All right. Last but not least, the in five years, I see myself exercise. I love this because it takes everything we're talking about and it turns it into sentences, right? So for those fans of narrative, which I am, I love narrative models of therapy. This is where the narrative can change, right? In five years, I see myself making a living from the books I have written or in private practice part-time or full-time. I see myself directing operations at my own nonprofit. So if a nonprofit is your dream, I see myself developing successful online continuing education. I see myself teaching as a professor at a university or something else. I mean, this is where you can really put your dream on paper and then put 
your money where your mouth is and start making pivots and changes so that that is now part of your five-year strategic plan. Okay. So this training, I talked to you about how passion isn't just kind of a, I don't know, touchy feely thing. It's really designed to help you make strategic decisions, strategic decisions based on facts that will help you course correct and land in a, on a practice that isn't going to burn you out, right? You're too important to lose to burning out, giving up, not knowing the rules, going broke. You're too important to lose. Your community is going to count on you. So you've got to make these pivots. You've got to be able to find your niche so you can make a living doing this thing that you love. It's not going to stay this way forever. You're going to continue to pivot for the rest of your career, right? And read that lifespan book. Remember that lifespan course you had to take back at university? It was the real deal. You keep growing and changing from here on out. So let's plan your business accordingly. So if you have questions or comments, you can always throw them in the thread here. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. I'd love to hear how folks have created their own pivots based on their niches. Remember this month, if you're watching this on replay, we are in September. This is September 1st. This month, we're going to be talking a lot about supervision as a pivot. And I'm inviting in Amanda Esquivel to come talk to us about how she used supervision to build her dream practice. And it's awesome. All right, guys, this is Dr. Kate Walker. Thanks for watching. And I'm going to stop the share. And, and here we go.